In the last couple of videos uh, I've looked at um, different ways of measuring the potential influence of individual points on a multiple linear regression analysis. So we looked at outliers which are observations with um, a very different observed response value to the predicted value from the model. So in other words they have very large uh, residuals. Uh, and then we also looked at um, leverage, which rather than um, looking at unusual response values, instead look at extreme predictor values. And so predictor values that are either very extreme or very unusual have the potential to have an undue influence on the model as well. In this video, I'm going to look at a composite measure of both outlyingness and leverage called Cook's distance. And Cook's distance is very easy to use because um, we can just calculate or have the software calculate the Cook's distances for us and then uh, have a look, see where the higher values of Cook's distance are, which observations they are, and if any observation has a Cook's distance greater than one, then those points are often sufficiently influential that they should be removed from the analysis and we should certainly investigate further. If we have an observation with a Cook's distance greater than 0.5, so maybe it's not quite as high as one, but it's bigger than 0.5, uh, then those observations are sometimes sufficiently influential that they should be removed from the main analysis and investigated further. And then everything else is unlikely to have an undue, undue influence on the model. Um, that doesn't mean it never happens though. There are cases where we get a Cook's distance that doesn't reach the 0.5 threshold, um, but it, yet it does have an undue influence on the model. And there's an example of that in one of the problems in the textbook. So it's, it's very easy to use Cook's distance and then just as we did with looking at outliers and high leverage points, if we identify a point through Cook's distance that we think we should investigate further, the way we do that is to remove the point from the data set, refit the model and see if things change a whole lot. And if they do, then we would conclude that point is having an undue influence on the model. And then we have to determine what to do with it. And we talked about that uh, in a previous video. Uh, otherwise, if it's not having a great impact on the model, then we might as well just leave it in the analysis. So let's go back to look at our example with the cars. And so what I'm going to do is Let's just look at the data just to remind ourselves what we're looking at. So we've got a whole bunch of cars here with fuel efficiency and city miles per gallon, engine size, number of cylinders and volume. And then what we did was we created a transformed response variable that was equal to city um, uh, gallons per 100 miles because uh, it turns out that we get a more effective model if we analyze the response variable using that transformation and the three predictors, engine size, number of cylinders and volume. And so that first model with, so this has all the cars in it, these are the results and we can calculate the Cook's distances and then I need to attach the data set first, so let's do that again. Okay, there we go. So here's a plot with Cook's distance on the vertical axis and on the horizontal axis, it doesn't really matter what I plot on this axis, I just need something that's going to spread the points out so I can identify individual points. Uh, in this case, I've got uh, high ID numbers in the data set and so that spreads the points out nicely. And then I'm going to See if I can identify um, this this value up here. So this guy has the highest Cook's distance. This car, uh, and this this one's kind of also sticks out. So I'll identify that one. So that's cars number 32 and 50, and those two cars 
or one's the Lexus and remember we identified that before when we looked at the studentized residuals it had a studentized residual of minus eight point something it really stuck out um, way beyond the plus minus three threshold that designates it as an outlier so it's a clear outlier and we I we realized that that was was having a big influence on the model because when we refit the model with the Lexus excluded we get very different results uh, and from the background of this application we know why it's because that Lexus is a hybrid and all the other cars have regular gas powered engines so it doesn't really belong in this analysis uh, this other one's interesting though this is a Rolls-Royce Ghost so we did identify this car before when we looked at leverage but it didn't actually have the highest leverage in the data set if you remember the highest leverage was uh, an Aston Martin and I think the, the Rolls-Royce Ghost was the next highest leverage but from Cook's distance perspective uh, it has the next potential for having an undue influence on the model so what would we do at this point well at this point we want to see if any of our Cook's distances exceed either the 0.5 threshold or the, or the threshold of 1 well none of them exceed the, the, the threshold of 1 uh, but the Lexus does exceed the 0.5 threshold uh, and it's pretty isolated from all the other ones as well okay it's quite a bit higher even than the next highest which is the, the Rolls-Royce Ghost so using our rule of thumb we would say okay I'm, I'm a little concerned about this observation I'm gonna exclude it from my analysis and see whether the, the fit of the model changes a whole lot so we did that previously and we discovered that yeah sure enough the model fit does change quite a bit this Lexus doesn't really belong in this analysis uh, we really ought to exclude it so when we did that we fit another model so this this data set here you'll see it doesn't have the uh, um, doesn't have car number 32 okay jumps from 31 to 33 okay so we've excluded that uh, that hybrid Lexus this Lexus here is not a hybrid uh, and then we fit the model again and then now we can calculate the Cook's distances again and so again we'll draw a plot of the Cook's distances and we'll use ID number on the horizontal axis to spread the points out and we'll identify well we know this one is probably going to be the the uh, Rolls-Royce and maybe let's uh, let's identify a couple more as well this one and this one so what are those cars so this one up here is the Rolls-Royce Ghost uh, this one in the middle is the Dodge Challenger and this one over here is the Aston Martin so these are the three cars that we identified before when we looked at leverage when we looked at leverage though it was actually the Aston Martin that had the highest leverage but from Cook's distance point of view it's it's the uh, Rolls-Royce Ghost that's most worrisome but how worrisome is it really if we rescale the graph so that we've got the 0.5 threshold on here uh, none of these three cars are anywhere near that 0.5 threshold so we don't really need to worry and this kind of confirms what we suspected before when we looked at the um, the leverages and we were a little worried about the Aston Martin because it had the highest leverage but then when we refit the model without the Aston Martin nothing really changed uh, it's a similar story if you were to exclude the Rolls-Royce Ghost or the Dodge Challenger nothing really changes so the story here is yes these three cars have a relatively high Cook's distance but it doesn't come anywhere near the 0.5 threshold and so we're not overly concerned 
So that concludes this little section of videos, the last three, where we've looked at potential influence of individual points on our regression analysis. So we've looked at whether a point is, uh, is an outlier. So it has a studentized residual um, outside of plus minus three. Uh, we looked at leverages and uh, we use leverage to flag potential uh, undue influential points by looking at whether the leverage is greater than 3k plus 1 over n or whether it's greater than 2k plus 1 over n and it's isolated. And then we'll finally we looked in this video at Cook's distances and the rule of thumb that we use there to flag potentially uh, influential points was if it's greater than 1 it's it's quite likely to be influential if it's greater than 0.5 it may be influential uh, if it's less than 0.5 it's probably not influential uh, but there's still a chance it could be so these three videos we've looked at uh, one potential source of um, uh, pitfalls if you like from doing a multiple linear regression analysis things to look out for as you're doing the analysis that kind of might trip you up that might um, result in in models with results that aren't really very meaningful uh, in the next video uh, we'll look at some other pitfalls that you need to be aware of as you're going through a multiple linear regression analysis